my presentation will also be in English, and it is entitled Jermuk Will Not Become a Mine, Towns Spy Economy and the Struggle for Environmental Justice. Uh, in this paper, I analyze how the spy economy of Jermuk Town in Armenia has impacted the local residents and the, the wider public struggle against the operation of a gold mine in the town's vicinity. I propose that, among other factors, the spy economy has had an impact on the residents' perceptions of the town's image, atmosphere, and economic prospects, and on their lifestyles, occupations, and livelihoods, their connection with the surrounding nature. Uh, these per perceptions and dispositions have, in turn, fueled local resistance against mining. Um, in order to make metal mines acceptable to residents of local communities and to prevent opposition, mining corporations often present their projects as development, quote unquote, promising growth of infrastructure, new employment opportunities, social projects, large amounts for purchasing a residence land, um, quote unquote, mitigation of any environmental impacts and so forth. And as Stuart Kirsch, who is the author of um, Mining Capitalism, um, uh, put it, the idealized positive representation of metal mining industry typically goes along with hiding its negative consequences until they become apparent and it is too late to prevent mining operations. As I propose in this paper, uh, the framing of the gold mining project as development did not work for a large segment of Jermuk's population, if not for its overwhelming majority, in part because they perceived their town and infrastructure as already having been developed, having a republic-wide and international significance, allowing for a sustainable, peaceful lifestyle and occupying a specific economic niche that has made their incomes highly dependent on the preservation of pristine nature. Uh, the significance of Jermuk as a center of, of medical tourism for the wider public in Armenia was also a reason why mining the mountain of Amusar found a large scale opposition. Uh, we are now more familiar with the uh, Save Amulsar slogan of the anti-mining movement, which incorporates wider environmental, social, and human rights concerns. However, the initial slogan uh, used by the activists was, Jermuk will not become a mine. In 2012, a Facebook group under this name was created to consolidate the struggle. Uh, the slogan specifically expressed the concern with the future of the town. Um, much has been written on uh, environmental and socioeconomic impacts of both mining and tourism industries in various areas of the world. Both industries have been associated with positive and negative impacts, such as contribution to GDP. Mining is, uh, is specifically associated with strong uh, negative environmental and associated socioeconomic impacts. Concerning the macroeconomic impacts of mining, uh, the resource curse argument should be kept in mind. As pointed out by Audi, um, and I quote here, uh, the mineral economy's economic growth and their social welfare are inferior to those of non-mineral economies at a similar level of development, end of quote. So according to Audi, there are many reasons for this, especially that much of the generated income um, goes to foreign investors, while locally mining generates few job opportunities. It may disturb the development of other economic activities like tourism and agriculture, and it may result in serious environmental problems. Uh, this means that mining may have different socioeconomic effects depending on whether the mine is exploited in an area where people have traditionally engaged in mining and the settlement was built specifically for that reason, or if mining enters an area where people have traditionally relied on other economic activities and that might be strongly affected by mining. So in the second scenario, um, people may become displaced or dispossessed, and in this sense, uh, scholars, uh, for instance, Tanya Lee, uh, has spoken of um, the creation of surplus populations. So the poorer the mine, the larger the generated waste, the stronger the environmental impacts, especially uh, if mining is planned in an environmentally sensitive area. Uh, mining can affect other economic activities, first and foremost, due to um, caused environmental degradation and pollution, including dust, noise, explosions, acid rock drainage, contamination of water resources with heavy metals, uh, and so on. 
Stuart Kirsch also points out assessment of mining impact on local communities often do not take into account various associated costs like the cost of used water, uh, the polluted natural resources or the cost to uh, local communities in terms of health, their income, their businesses, uh, depriving them of other long-term development opportunities and so forth. Uh, so um, another serious issue to take into account is how strong the potential of the mine is to pollute the environment, i.e. whether the rocks have strong acid generation potential, whether the mine is in close proximity to surface and groundwater and so forth. So scholars have written a lot about mining's and tourism's impact on um, uh, urban areas and um, for instance, scholars have demonstrated that in addition to environmental consequences, mining can lead to growing social inequalities and polarization of a local population. And tourism can have similar impacts too if the businesses are concentrated in the hands of an elite. Um, however, um, in the case of Jelmuk, my fieldwork revealed a very different experience of tourism. A local residents associated it with peace, uh, sustainability, um, income opportunities and potential for growth. Here we can see the water gallery in Jermuk. Uh, the tourist infrastructure allowed different population segments to make an income, and hence they did not associate tourism with social polarization. However, the arrival of the mining corporation to nearby Amulsar started changing the social atmosphere of the town. Uh, so the, a large share of the residents feared strong impacts of the mining, not just on the pristine nature and the mineral springs, uh, but also on the tourist economy of the town and hence on their livelihoods. Uh, let me just briefly present my methodology. I have started conducting um, field work on safe Amusar movement uh, since mid-2018 uh, and uh, the field work is still ongoing. So far, I have done in-depth interviews with activists, participant observation during rallies, both in Yerevan and in Jermuk, uh, several visits to the town of Jermuk nearby Gandevas village and blog posts at the mountain, during which I have conducted interviews with local residents and um, Amusar defenders. And I have conducted document analysis by examining respective legislation, expert assessments, official discourse, public discourse, and so forth. So turning to the context of the study, as detailed by Armin Eishhanyan, mining industry in Armenia was privatized and deregulated starting with 1999, and policies were made mining friendly to meet the interests of mining companies and to attract foreign investment. Uh, mining industry is poorly regulated in Armenia and mines working or abandoned regularly cause pollution. Uh, given the widespread corruption in Armenia, it played an important role in allocation of mining permissions. At the same time, the local community's participation in decision-making was made rather symbolic. Permissions were granted even in cases in which local residents and or experts and the wider public protested against mining and raised serious concerns. It should be said that though mining uh, would undoubtedly affect Jermuk, the town was not recognized as an impact community until 2016. So making the residents unable to legally take part in public hearings or contest mining through litigation. Uh, in opinions of numerous active residents, this happened because during the first public discussion, uh, when the corporation presented the project to Jermuk's residents, it became clear that the residents would oppose the project. Amulsar Mountain can be seen from Jermuk. It is located just about six to 12 kilometers away, very close to surface and groundwater resources, including the rivers of Arpa, Vorotan, and Darp, Kechut Water Reservoir, Spandarian Kechut Tunnel, leading to Sevan Lake, and so forth. The mountain hosts one plant, 18 types of birds, and four types of mammals registered in the red list of endangered species. And Armenian law prohibits actually mining in habitats of red list species. The area considered for mining partly coincides with Jermuk area of special conservation interest according to Bern Convention. The fact that the mountain has acid generation potential makes mining very risky here in terms of polluting the environment uh, along the rivers and endangering the wildlife and the well-being of communities. Um, the mountain contains low-grade ore only about 0.78 grams of gold per ton. The corporation planned open pit mining uh, with the use of cyanide leaching, a further cause uh, for serious concern since the heap leach facility was supposed to function 
just uh, a few hundred meters away from the nearby Gandeva's village and very close to Arpa Gorge. Uh, and uh, according, uh, so the company gained its first exploration license in 2006 and the exploitation license in 2009. And according to numerous local residents, they only massively found out about the, the, the planned mine in 2010, 2011. So let me present a little bit Jermuk as a health resort. Uh, Jermuk has a long history as a settlement near mineral waters. Um, the village has been mentioned uh, in the 13th century history of the province of Sunik by Stepano Sorbelian. A basin for mineral waters was built there in the Middle Ages and restored during the Tsarist rule in the 1860s. Uh, in the Soviet period, urban development plans were drawn for Jermuk starting with the 1940s. Uh, the first mineral water bottling factory in Jermuk was founded in 1951. Uh, since the 1960s, given the construction of sanatoriums, the water gallery and other infrastructure, the town grew to become a popular spa center in the Soviet Union uh, with residents from Armenia and other Soviet republics coming there for recreation. By the end of the 1980s, the population of Jermuk reached about 9,000 people. However, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the tourist economy started to decline. Uh, over time, it recovered only to a certain extent. The flow of medical tourists, including from other countries, increased. New hotels and sanatoriums were built. Um, the water bottle industry expanded and so forth. So the town also provides opportunities for winter sports, and uh, there are plans uh, to uh, develop story services and infrastructure in that direction. By 2015, the number of residents was only about 4,400. Um, the economy of Jermuk and the lives of its residents are entwined with the surrounding nature in multiple ways. Let me just briefly show the living districts of the city. So uh, the town is divided um, into uh, two areas, touristic and residential, on two banks of uh, the river. So the economy, uh, as I said, uh, and the lives of its residents are entwined with the surrounding nature in multiple ways. The town's water bottling industry, including the export of Jermuk mineral water and tourism provide numerous residents with stable jobs and tourism provides further income opportunities. Many chose professions associated with tourism, specifically with spa industry. Certainly residents do speak of economic elites of the town. Uh, Nevertheless, profits from tourism are not restricted to people with large capital investments. Already in the Soviet period, residents used to rent out their apartments or rooms to visitors during the high season, and uh, which provided them with quite a significant side income. Today, too, many tourists who cannot afford staying in more expensive hotels or sanatoriums prefer to rent out apartments or rooms from local residents and uh, during my visits, I've stayed in different apartments, uh, even with pensioners who are renting out the room. And so it's, um, they don't take much money, but it is still a significant addition to their pension. And some families were able to renovate their housing and they're renting it out during the season. Thus, this is a quite a significant contribution to their family budget. Uh, other residents profit from tourism by selling agricultural produce, dried herbs, souvenirs, paintings, organizing sightseeing trips, driving private taxis, and so forth. So these small businesses or income opportunities are open for residents because numerous tourists come to Jermuk primarily for enjoying the common resources that are available for free. Uh, so many choose to stay with residents rather than living in a hotel on, or in a sanatorium. And um, this is an important reason why tourist economy is associated with inclusivity and sustainability, because it is seen as profiting the town's inhabitants. Another reason for perceiving um, tourism in Jermuk as sustainable is that this economy builds on maintaining the natural resources and using them sustainably rather than polluting or destroying them. Besides the mineral water that is available to everyone, the tourists are attracted by the tranquility of the town, by the clean air filled with delightful scent of pines, by uh, lakes and gurgling creeks running down from the hills around the gorge of Arpa River, um, the picturesque waterfall, opportunities for hiking and so forth. In fact, the tranquility of the town is seen by many as contributing to the healing that medical tourists seek in Jermuk, as people who drink the water three times a day are advised by doctors to take long and quiet walks after visits to the gallery and prior to eating. 
Other attractions include the 10th century Gandevang Monastery near the town of Jermuk, Bronze, uh, Bronze Age caves and so forth. So as can be seen from the discussion above, um, the economy of the town has had a profound impact on the lifestyle and livelihoods of its residents. The residents see their town as a space very tightly intertwined with the surrounding nature and their income as highly dependent on the availability of unpolluted nature. Uh, when the plans to exploit a gold mine near the town became widely known to the residents, they were the first to raise concerns and objections to it and were soon joined by environmental activists. So here uh, we see a meeting. Uh, these are um, representatives of businesses in Jermuk who in 2012 applied with an open letter to the president of Armenia requesting to ban the project since it was undermining the development program of the city. Similar requests were made by the mayor and the city council to the company and the then minister of nature protection who is currently under criminal investigation. No public hearing as required by the law has ever taken place in Jermuk. Uh, the argument concerning the potential uh, of the mine to extinguish the spy economy and to deprive the residents of their livelihoods in the long run is an important part of the struggle against the mine. It should be said that these concerns are well grounded in accounts of scholars and experts. When in 2014, 210 villagers from Gandevas and several civil society representatives applied to the company's investor, International Finance Corporation, the latter concluded that, I quote, potential impacts of the mine on Jermuk's brand as a resort town had not been fully considered, end of quote. And subsequently, IFC withdrew from the project. Certainly, the responses of the surrounding settlements residents have not been unanimous. Some residents of Jermuk or Gandevas revealed that years ago, uh, when they had just heard about the planned mining project, they had been completely unaware of the potential impact of mining on the nature and on the economy of Jermuk, and hence they had be not been opposed to mining. Um, so if, of course, we, uh, on the given the premise that it would not cause any harm to the nature, these residents revealed that they changed their opinion over time for instance, thanks to hearing experts' exp explanations on the impact of mining or seeing a television program and so forth. For instance, um, here a middle-aged woman from Jermuk uh, whose son has been active in blocking the roads to the mountain revealed that she worked for the mining company and only changed her opinion on mining independently after learning more about it. I quote her, we oppose mine exploitation. I worked there uh, in the beginning and we viewed it positively. I was working as a caregiver in the kindergarten. We were happy that we, there will be jobs. I myself started digging the internet, the TV. Then my son took part in the protests. Then on TV, I saw a map that showed how the waters, the polluted waters from the mine, would flow into Ketchut storage lake. Uh, Jermuk is the most pristine place in Armenia, and now they want to contaminate even this. Before, we didn't know. Everything was clean. We didn't know what the impact of the mine would be. Um, and then she says, um, only when I found out myself, she, so I, she changed her opinion, and she said, Jermuk residents will rise with arms against mining, now everybody already, end of quote. Uh, hence, uh, the very strong opposition to mining that exists now in Jermuk is the result of years of raising public awareness on the impact of mining. This work has been conducted by experts, active local residents, environmental activists and other civil society actors. However, my interviews and observations reveal that uh, there was or is more unanimity against mining in Jermuk than compared, uh, for instance, to the village of Gandevas. So in Gandevas, uh, the village community is described to have been divided and driven into conflict due to attitudes to mining because numerous residents sold their land plots to the corporation while others ferociously opposed the mine. My interviews in the village of Gandevas also revealed that years later, the residents still have different opinions and there are view those viewing the prospect of mining favorably in case if it would be safe, since it could be a source of jobs and income. In Jermuk, however, many of my interlocutors revealed that they had been against mining from the time they had heard about it. When walking around town, one may often see safe Amulsar posters, 
Uh, whenever I was in Jermuk, either for conducting interviews or for attending demonstrations, the residents who learned about my work thanked me for taking an interest uh, in their struggle. There were instances of people paying for my ticket in the transportation, giving me a small present, maybe a pack of dried herbs or a souvenir as a token of gratitude for standing with them. While the concern with the negative impact of the mine is prominent, that, uh, uh, this is not the only concern shared by the residents. Interviews with them reveal their heightened awareness of the connection between human health and the environment and their profound appreciation of the natural resources and their concern with protecting them from pollution. Uh, so many spoke of the town as being located in a pristine area, its main attractions being the mineral springs, clean water, air and soil, unpolluted agricultural produce of the surrounding villages, vegetation and wildlife and so forth. They very strongly opposed the prospect of the spa area turning into an industrial one with explosions, rock grinding and cyanide, heat leaching processes going on so close to the town. For instance, according to Amulsar defender Aharon Arsenyan, he and many of his friends were opposed to the mine when they had heard about it years ago as school children. He revealed during an interview that they did not like seeing people in helmets walking around the town. Uh, they were more used to tourists um, enjoying walking around. The people with helmets, the idea of industry, did not fit the atmosphere of the town. He said that his opposition started from there and grew stronger as he learned more about gold mining. And I'm approaching the conclusion of my paper. As Aharon and many, uh, many think that the mine would negatively impact the air, the water, the soil in the region, and it eventually would extinguish the medical tourist economy of Jermuk, potentially polluting the mineral springs. Furthermore, um, many have much broader concerns than the impact of Jermuk, understanding that the pollution of the rivers of Arpa and Vorotan would have a much wider impact on environment in Armenia. And many residents started experiencing uh, the impact of the mine during its construction, including the pollution of air with dust, muddy rains, increasing cough among the population, a few instances of pollution of drinking water and in Gandevas and so forth. So according to another Amulsar defender, he only realized what the impact of mine would be when he witnessed the pollution of Arpa River, which we can see here. So um, the mine was, uh, some infrastructure for the mine was being constructed and the river became polluted with clay. This was not a chemical pollution, but uh, he realized that cyanide spills could happen when the cyanide heap leach facility would start working. So this is the construction of a heap leach facility. And uh, even due to clay pollution by clay, a lot of fish died in the water. So he realized if cyanide would spill, this would be a much more significant disaster for Arpa River. So he also revealed that he had been working in a, uh, he had seen a mining site in Sotk in Armenia, and he understood what pollution from the mine was like. He described himself as a local man whose life is profoundly connected to the surrounding nature and objected um, that opponents considered him and other local protesters to be environmental activists. I quote him, I am a hunter. I am connected with nature from my childhood. I'm not an environmentalist, but I love nature and I consider myself a man of nature. So uh, just one last argument of why I think there is some, uh, such a strong opposition to mining in Jermuk. It's because there are um, a lot of professionals uh, working uh, in the areas of health, uh, medical tourism, and uh, there are also other professionals quite well aware of what um, impacts of mining would be, and they help shape the discourse in Jermuk. Uh, for instance, during the first meeting with the corporation, just local residents, teachers, and um, local professionals, they raised quite serious concerns um, about the potential impacts of the mine, like the potential of explosions to pollute the air and the soil and so forth. And uh, healthcare professionals were also outspoken in their opposition to the mine. For instance, according to a female doctor working in a sanatorium in Jermuk, the mine could contribute to the increase of certain diseases among the population. To conclude, as I have argued, uh, the spy economy of Jermuk has contributed to advancing certain dispositions among the residents of the town, which in turn have coalesced into a strong resistance against the mining project. For the residents of Jermuk, the struggle against the mine is also a struggle for social justice. 
uh, for they understand that they might be the ones becoming dispossessed as a result of mining operations. Thank you.